I'd like to call for members' statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today to highlight Suicide Prevention Day, which was just held on September 10th. Suicide Prevention Day has been recognized for the last 13 years, the first one taking place in September of 2003 by the International Association of Suicide Prevention. This year focused on three key points to suicide prevention, connect, communicate and care. It is crucial to connect with those who have been affected by suicide, whether someone who may be at risk, a family member or a friend or a loved one who has been lost to suicide. We cannot overlook the importance of a connected society. You must be alert when a friend, co-worker, or family member is disconnecting themselves from the community. The next point is communication. We are constantly struggling with the stigma that is associated with mental illness. Members of our communities have a role to play and must be open to discussing the risk of suicide. We should encourage everyone to discuss these matters in a considerate manner. The third point in the discussion regarding suicide prevention is care. We must ensure a strong health care system that can support and treat those at risk. The City of St. Thomas acknowledged Suicide Prevention Day by raising a flag that is memory of Nicholas Knapp. His mother, Penny, has been a tireless advocate for suicide prevention since the last of her son nearly a decade ago. There is more the government can do to prevent suicide. Our communities have lost too many people. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. Let's get right down to business, Speaker. Energy to power our heaters, our refrigerator, and our lights is a basic need, but skyrocketing prices mean that more and more people are struggling to afford everyday necessities. I've heard from too many single parents and low-income families who can't buy new school supplies for their children because of their skyrocketing hydro bill. I've heard from too many seniors that set their alarms for 2 a.m. just to do their laundry. And there are still too many young people in Windsor that are not working or underemployed that will be forced this winter to choose between heating and eating. Our Royal Canadian Legion pays nearly $3,000 a month in hydro when that money should be spent on programming and services. At our downtown mission, last April's rate hike is equivalent to the cost of one meal per month for someone in need. I would ask that a page please walk over and deliver the hydro bills that I've received to the, send them to the Minister of Energy and the Premier so that they can no longer look away as people in Ontario struggle to afford the most basic costs of living. I'd like to thank everyone in Windsor and Essex County that have sent me their bills. The government could have used yesterday's throne speech to truly change direction and work for Ontario families. They could have halted the sale of Hydro One. Instead, they, choose, they chose to stay the course and continue to work for only themselves. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member from Durham. I had a great summer in the riding of Durham. I spent my time exploring different events and festivities in my riding, and I spent time listening to my constituents and local issues while celebrating numerous events across the riding, such as Clarendon Heritage Week, Powwow in Skugag, Blueberry Festival in Bowmanville, and Blackstock. I also attended the Blackstack, Oxford and Port Perry Fairs. I could not help but wonder what these events would be without the hard work and dedication of volunteers. I wanted to take this opportunity to, thank, to tell you how grateful I am to be living in a wonderful riding such as Durham, so rich with volunteerism. They spent hours of their time planning, organizing and providing support for others, and this is without the expectation of reward. They are the cornerstone of, stone of my community, and it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge that today. So thank you, volunteers of the Durham Riding, for the tireless work you, you have completed over the summer and throughout the years that allow us to ensure that there are a variety of events to keep our community close and entertain our families. You guys give, us, give of yourself without expectation of anything in return, and saying that you make Durham a, a, Durham a great place is quite an understatement. With, the, with that being said, let me make one request of my community. When atten attending a local event, find a volunteer, give them a high five, and say thank you. Because without them, we would have no fun fairs or, fe or art festivals to bring our children to, and there would be no one to plan charitable events that so many organizations rely upon. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Speaker.
Thank you for the member, statement. The member from here Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to say thank you. Thank you to the thousands of people who have signed, taken the time to sign the petitions, raising their voice collectively to tell the Ontario government that they no longer can afford the ever-rising electricity costs that this government is imposing upon them. Petitions are, are being shared in seniors' apartments. They're being shared in the lunchroom of manufacturing uh, manufacturers. They're being shared uh, uh, throughout fall fairs. The list could go on and on. But in particular, I want to give real examples of the concerns that are being raised because of the mismanagement of the energy file. Gail from Paisley said that they took over the grocery store in 2014. We spent $410,000 on an ultra-efficient refrigeration display equipment and associated condensers, fans, and, and heat reclaim systems, $29,000 on new LED lighting and $75,000 on a new double-entry door to keep the heat and coolness in the store. We did all the renovations in the name of energy efficiency. We applied for Hydro One electricity grants and received a total of $24,000, about 5% of their total investment. And now their costs are reaching $6,000 a month. That story, that story can be echoed in Blythe. And for the individuals who are living on their own, they don't know where the money's going to come from one month to another to meet these costs. Ontario needs to do better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further member statements the member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to give you two numbers. The first is 2,000, and the second is 24. These numbers relate to a petition that I circulated in my writing. The petition called for the government to address the crisis with hydro rates and stop the sale of Hydro One. In just 24 hours, 24 signatures, over 2,000 seniors, workers, business owners, and young people all asked me to tell the Premier, enough is enough. But I can tell you our plan to give residents relief on their hydro bill does not end with the rebate of the HST, and neither should for this government. Hydro is an absolute crisis in this province. The Premier should announce she is stopping the sale off of Hydro One. Hydro should remain publicly delivered and publicly owned. The rebate for the HST in 2017 does not do enough for the 4,000 residents who are behind on their hydro bills, in my writing, or the residents who are choosing between paying paying their hydro bill or buying groceries. I have constituents in, in my, coming into my office who break down crying over their bills. Premier, the crisis is real in my riding and in Ontario. Mr. Speaker, from the people of Niagara to the Premier of Ontario, we ask you that you stop the sale of Hydro One, recognize that people can afford their bills and work with us to make life more affordable in Niagara and right across Ontario. Thank you very much. The member from Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, on August 20th, the community of Kingston and the Islands welcomed the tragically hip home. Yes. Fans from across the country were transfixed as the band performed a heartfelt concert at the K-Rock Centre. When a band becomes legendary, their place of origin is inevitably swept up with it. The hip's gift to Canadian cultural identity and by virtue to Kingston, to this province and to this country is unparalleled. 11.7 million Canadians shared in the three-hour concert, which would not have been possible without the CBC and the hip's collaborative approach. Gord's pantomime playfulness towards the end of the concert was a gentle reminder for all of us to find the joie de vie even in the face of diversity. Thank you to the countless city staff, Kingston City Police, Frontenac paramedics, and Kingston firefighters and numerous volunteers who worked tirelessly to ensure that the concert was, a sa was safe for all. I especially want to thank the Tragically Hip for capturing the heart of the nation and bringing our hometown into the national spotlight on that forgettable night. Unforgettable night. For the hip, for the love of Gord, and for your searing and poignant message that night that touched the heart of our nation, we will be forever thankful.
Further member statements, the member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in recognition of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in Ontario. I'm pleased to update this House that since we unanimously agreed last spring to recognize September as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, a new movement has spawned coast to coast, and it will surely impact the lives of all children diagnosed with cancer. More than 40 buildings, from Charlottetown to the Vancouver Legislature, have lit up in gold in support of the Maggie Project, as it is now known. From Childhood Cancer Awareness to the Big Book of Care and Go Gold for Kids to the Maggie Project, we need to continue to stand united to conquer what's known as the number one cause of disease-related death for children ages 1 to 14. I want to thank our supporters who are in the public gallery for joining us today. Canadian Childhood Oncology Research Network, OPACC, Childhood Cancer Canada, ChildCan, Megan's Walk, and the Pediatric Oncology Group of Ontario, with my constituent and advocate Neil Rourke and Maggie Jenkins' parents, David and Maureen. The fight against can childhood cancer. <laughs> the fight against childhood cancer should never be fought alone. That is what the gold ribbons we are wearing today symbolize. I wear my pin proudly and in honor of three young people who I have a personal connection with. Kona Higgins, the son of dear family friends from the UK who sadly passed away from cancer at the age of 17. Haley Nuttall, the daughter of dear family friends, the Ruth and Nuttall families, who passed away at the age of eight, and Brendan Rourke, a young man from Bruce Gray Owen Sound, whose father, Neil, is now a tireless advocate, a member of the Advocacy for Canadian Childhood Oncology Research Network, raising funds and awareness for young girls and boys whose childhoods have been regretfully cut short. Neil recently shared with me that the World Health Organization has found that globally for children before their 20th birthday, 821 are diagnosed and 164 die every day from a form of childhood cancer. So let us be reminded that we need to do more. I respectfully ask all of us to commit to take action and work tirelessly to ensure we give children and youth every opportunity to grow and thrive and live in a world that is free from this life-threatening disease. It is my hope that we will soon, for the dream of my hero, Terry Fox, find a cure for all cancers. Somewhere, the hurting must stop. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I, uh... I thank our guests for being here, Neil in particular, who visited my writing, but also I wish to uh, ask if you would uh, keep in your minds the people that are actually biking across Canada as we speak. Speaker Chris Collins from New Brunswick, who lost a child to cancer, is a friend of mine, and he asked me uh, to thank you for the support that you showed today, so thank you very much. Further statements, the member from the member from Beaches East York. Well, well, thank you, Speaker. Uh, I rise today to bring greeting congratulations on behalf of our Summer Olympians who represented Canada in Rio and to congratulate local volunteers in Beaches East York who planned a great parade to welcome them all home. So last month we all watched and cheered as athletes from across Ontario ran, swim, cycled, rode their way to glory. And we celebrate not just those who, who uh, run won medals, but those also who achieved personal bests or who fought their way through injuries in order to uh, achieve their goals. And among those we cheered was Penny Oleksiak, a 16-year-old Monarch Park student from Beaches East York. She was raised in the beaches. She swam at Wayne Somerville Pool and Glen Ames Public School. And Penny won four medals in Rio, inspired a whole generation of young beachers and uh, Canadians to pursue their dreams. And she also inspired two local leaders, Joanna Carlo and Alice McMurray, who planned a great parade on her return. The parade walked down Woodbine Avenue to Queen Street to Kew Gardens. It was attended by, um, by the Premier, uh, the, Eleanor McMahon, the Minister of Culture, Sport and Tourism, local MPP, uh, my, myself actually, and the local <laughs> MP and the member of uh, City Council. Mr. Speaker, I want us all to celebrate the incredible success Ontario had both in the Summer Olympics, but also to acknowledge that we now have have the Paralympics going on down in Rio, and there's more reasons to cheer. Another Beaches East York resident, Victoria Nolan, who has won a bronze medal in rowing. Despite her affliction, she's completely blind. Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Thank you very much, Speaker. Few in the Ottawa Valley did not have their eyes fixed to their television sets when Eganville's Melissa Bishop returned to the Olympics in Rio to represent Canada in the women's 800 meters. 
Finishing with the second best time in the qualifiers, Melissa secured her place in the Olympic finals with the whole country watching. Melissa went on to run a tremendous race for her personal best time and a Canadian record of 157.02. Sadly, she finished fourth amid a controversy that Melissa, showing the first class person that she is, stayed on the high road and didn't wade in. She has since continued to conduct herself with the highest level of professionalism with her eyes fixed on future competitions. This past Saturday, Eganville welcomed Melissa, Melissa home in perhaps the biggest parade the village has ever seen. The parade was followed by a dinner later that evening where people could once again honour and correct, congratulate their Olympian. Even though she is one of the world's best in her sport, Melissa is, a, Melissa is an amazingly humble person. It has been an honour for me to have followed her athletic progress through the years. Melissa has made the Valley and indeed all of Canada shine brightly on the world stage. In addition, through her many, in addition, through her many visits to local schools, Melissa has inspired a generation of youngsters to believe in themselves. One of those children is our granddaughter, May, who now hopes to one day be able to run like Melissa. She even inspires some older folks, like me, who recently got a new hip. But as I said to Melissa on Saturday, I won't be challenging her anytime soon. I was thrilled when Melissa announced that she plans to compete in the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Melissa, we're so proud of you, all that you've accomplished through your tremendous sacrifice and hard work. The Valley loudly and proudly calls you our Olympian. We and all of Canada will watch closely over the next four years and will be, in, and will be enthusiastically cheering you once again when you take to the track in Tokyo. Thank you. Thank you. Point of order, the member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to correct my statement during my uh, member statement. I said that in 24 hours we had 24 signatures. I got that wrong. It was in 24 hours we had 2,000 signatures. Thank, Thank you very much. Members are allowed to correct their record. It's now time for reports by committees.